Okay, so welcome to the second part of our discussion about property. I'm here also with the local lass, it's uh, Sue Sim? Sims. Sims, Sue Sims. Um, so you were born here in I Birmingham? Was, yes, I yeah. was born and educated and lived here all my life. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. So, um, if you want to get local knowledge, you're the person to speak to, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, <laughs> I know all the different areas of the city from yeah. um, my working life. Right. Um, I've worked in different areas of the city and I've worked with lots of different companies. So, first of all, tell us about your property journey, Sue, because uh, I know you started quite young. Yeah. And you broke into the market, so just tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. I, bought, I bought my first property when I was 21. Right. Um, my parents had always been involved in property in a small way. Um, we found a shop. Um, my dad wanted me to go to buy it. Um, his bank manager would have financed me, but only if um, my dad stood as a guarantor. So I went and found new, another bank manager to another bank and did the deal myself. Um, uh, it was the first property that I bought nearly 30 years ago. Wow. Yeah. That's um, fantastic. And you still got it today? I've still got it today. That's and awesome. it's actually my shop that I now use for my own property business. Wow. That's my, my shop now that I use for Property Genie. Fantastic. Tell us about Property Genie and how that came about because you, you didn't, you, you bought that first property. How did life evolve before you got the next one? Okay. I then had about 15 years. Yeah. I didn't buy any more property, we just okay. held on to that one, yeah. it rented, it was very easy. Mm. I was very committed to um, a job working in recruitment, I didn't mm. really have any spare time, so I didn't really devote any time mm. to um, my property portfolio. Um, started working with a um, lady who's now my business partner, my best friend, mm -hmm. and we decided 15 years ago that we wanted to invest in property. We now have about eight properties jointly. Um, I also have invested with my sister mm -hmm. and a couple of my other friends so mm -hmm. all of my property within my portfolio they're all joint ventures right. and they're all split 50-50. Mm -hmm. So you've also got some HMOs and you've got some buy to lets Predominance of my portfolio are buy to let. Right. Um, I manage HMOs and I'm impressed by my first HMO property. Awesome. Yeah. Um, talk a little bit about Property Genie. How many properties do you manage? You obviously manage four investors and it also gives we you an opportunity. To find deals as Absolutely, well. yeah. yeah. <laughs> I uh, went into the property lettings business about six years ago. The letting agent I was using asked me to go into business with him. He knew that I was very sales focused, he wanted to grow his business. But once we were working together, he just wanted to sit in his office and do paperwork and let me go out and develop <laughs> <Wonderful>. the business. <laughs> so 18 months ago, I decided it was time to do it for myself. Yeah. And that, that's then when we've set up the business. Over mm. the last 18 months, We've grown the business. I now manage about 70 properties um, on behalf of other investors and included within those about 10 HMOs. So, I mean, today I learned so much about the different types of properties and that kind of stuff in Birmingham. And you being a local, and typically you would be the person that would manage it on behalf of the South African Absolutely. that's going to invest right here yes. in Birmingham. Yes. So, um, so tell us uh, some of the um, criteria, what do you, you look for and, and maybe just the tenant mix a little bit about in, in, uh, in Birmingham. Okay, what we look for is the, the property that I feel is going to be big enough to support five or six people who want to live independently but within shared accommodation. Right. And then the um, type of people that I look that tend to make a good mix for a shared house mm -hmm. are um, professionals, people who are working full time. Um, Final year students and postgraduate students. Mm -hmm. I typically will avoid 18, 19 year olds who are away from home for the first time. They just sure. want a party. Yeah. They're not really going to make a very good mix then if you're putting those into a house where you've got three or four other people who want to work. Right. So right. I, I, we tend to um, look quite specifically as to the mix of people that are going to be living together in the house. Mm. And I think that's the key right. is to get the right people mm. sharing. Is there quite a stringent process before you recruit tenants? I yes. mean, do you do credit checks and all yes. that kind of stuff? Take us through that process. When somebody rings up um, to say they're interested in having a look at a room, we have in an HMO, then we'll ask them for some background, how old they are, what job they do, are they smokers, non-smokers? Um, so we've got a feel for them before we meet them to think, okay, if they've asked to go into a specific property, do they fit with the mix of people who are already there? Mm -hmm. If they do that, we'll then meet them. And again, you get a good sort of feeling from meeting people, whether yes. they're going to be right. If we then want to go ahead with them, they pay their admin fees, and then we start to do all the checks, which is a credit search, um, a landlord reference, a work reference, 
um, have all of their ID mm -hmm. um, that we need to to ensure they have the right to rent in the UK. Right. And then providing they pass all of those checks, right. we will then go ahead with the tenancy. Fantastic. So we're all in your great hands. That's fantastic. Okay, so where, in your opinion, Sue, do you, do you see the opportunities? I know today we saw so many different properties. Yeah, and, you know, you're an investor yeah. yourself and you're going into your first yep. HMO now. And I'm sure there's a lot of South Africans who be very intrigued by the HMO yeah. because the yield is so fantastic. Absolutely. And I mean, I, I saw one that was before the refurb yeah. and then one after, and it's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, um, good quality. Yeah. yeah, I think in order to achieve mm. the best rental potential that you can do, mm. you need to do the best refurb that you can and to spend as much money as you can afford to. Right. Because the, the better the product, mm -hmm. in terms of the finished um, article of what we're going to be offering, mm -hmm. means that you will get a better return on your money. Um, I know you're off to London after this on a three day property conference. I am, so yeah. it looks like you like to also educate yourself Absolutely. continuously, yeah. keep up to date, and that kind of stuff. So tell us a little bit about your sort of property philosophy in, in closing about, you know, just in general. Okay. About, yeah. I think the biggest thing that I've learned in the last 12 months, mm -hmm. and it was brought home by um, a keynote speaker that yeah. I listened to back in January, mm -hmm. who said the most important thing to do, and it doesn't matter what you do, but it's take action. <laughs> because if you don't take action, Wow. you're never going to do anything That's fantastic. and that was something that really hit home to me right. and the day after I came out of that meeting I went and viewed this property that I'm buying as my HMO put mm. an offer in on it and that's that was my mm. my key advice to anybody is make your decision and take action. Sue, thank you very much for the opportunity. It's been wonderful spending the day with and you. It's been good to, to spend the day with you. I've learned so much about and this market. Too. And it's, it's <laughs> excellent. I mean, I've, I've never seen so much of a you know, great city in such a day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.